me go backward now, right? Start with, let's say, ocean. Yeah? We want to understand sea level. I don't know how many audience really know that the computer climate model cannot actually calculate the sea level correctly. Simply because the model doesn't conserve mass. So <laughs> essentially, if you're even trying to understand how the ice sheets melted and dropped into, they don't conserve mass. It's as simple as that. This is why it's actually, they have to do a lot of fake work to try to pretend to say that they know how to do this climate model, uh, this sea level changes. In terms of computing re requirement, yes, that's part of the problem, but I always consider physics to be a harder, harder headache. Computing wise, think about the problem that we need to resolve. We need to resolve something of a globe, right? Globe we know is about 6,378 kilometers in terms of radius, so 12,000 or so. You have to go from that scale of 20,000 kilometers down to uh, a continent, a, 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 a grade, and then you got down to clouds, and then you're down to even ice particle in the physics, which is 10 to the minus 6 there in micron. Some processes you need, need to know 10 to the minus 9, which is in the nano region, right? Dust particles, so all this fine dust particle even. We're talking about, well, 10 to the minus 9 to, let's say, 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4. So you got 15 orders of magnitude. This is called 10 to the power, right? So hopefully people know 10 to the power of 1 means, you know, a factor of 10, that sort of thing. So you have 15 orders of magnitude. And if you actually work towards a, a physics of trying to call scale resolve, which means you resolve all of this physics. That is a cute number that my friend, uh, Professor Christopher X, computed to say, if you want to account for that, let the computer have the head to count these things. You, you will come up with a number of, you know, that the amount of uh, computing time you really needed to calculate the climate or the weather for one year even. You will need about, I forget the exact number, but it's 10 to the 20 years at least, computing time. So that will be, you know, the age of the universe is only like 15 billion years, so 10 to the 15, 10 to the 9, you are already, another 10,000 times or 100,000 times over the, the, the time that you actually have. So it, it tells you in terms of scale resolve physics, by the way, I believe that is wrong direction. Simply because I really think that to solve the physical problem, you understand you, the problem transfer into another class of problem which really related to interactions. More through the interaction physics, which is a lot probably simpler. So it's really about changing paradigm. It's not a, a lay hard force you know, wanted to solve this physics skill problem. Remember, Professor Freeman Dyson has reminded us about the complexity of the issues, mainly that maybe some governing biology is more dominant, right? Then you can simplify a lot of the problem if it were to be true, if it's true, right? And that sort of problem. In fact, people even study about, you know, bacteria. You would think bacteria have nothing to do with clouds. Yes, they can. They survive. Some of the bacteria can survive even cloud as high as the high cloud, which is of the order of eight kilometers, they have already detected biogen biogenic origin of those things. Those things, remember, marine boundary layer, marine, is full of all these animals, all this little tiny little stuff. They can track all this, all this behavior of all this uh, little life form, actually, are involved somehow. There is a new school of thought talking about El Nino being affected by this sort of thing. So we're dealing with a class of problem that's simply too big for any computer and any human mind to attack so far. So it is uh, both. To summarize, this is really related to computing power. Not quite, I would say it's the interacting problem. It's basically the, the class of the problem is too large for us to tackle. Especially, by the way, this one I had to make strong emphasis. I hope that of all the things that I say, you get across the essence of what I just tried to say to you. Is that, you know, I mentioned even bacteria in ice. I mentioned dust, probably I didn't mention so many more things. That these people are suggesting that you don't need to know any of this. All you need to know is this one single variable called carbon dioxide. Remind you again. <sighs> That's carbon dioxide breathing out. And they say by just knowing that, you will understand uh, the whole, how the climate system will change. This paradigm, by the way, is not only flaw. It's already experimentally proven to be wrong over and over and over again. All the best measurements that we know now 
clearly are showing you that especially last 20, 25 years or so, if you can measure something called a global temperature, by the way, measuring global temperature is another very difficult problem. It's another difficult proposition. It's easier said than done. It's just not a matter of taking all the thermometers in the world and just average them. Then you can ask, what about the rest of the world, the ocean, because there's only 30% on land and then the rest of it. Plus, there are, you know, all the ice region, you, don't, you cannot have too much information there. And what are we going to do with it, right? So there is a class of problem. If you can measure, it's actually not showing it's warming. And the thing that worries the most for me as a scientist is that those facts have been shown. But some of you may realize the last two or three years, there is actual actual movement and actual evidence, actual published, peer-reviewed published paper of some of those so-called scientists to go as far as something that you will not believe. Because all of us believe in people's good faith and good will. But they go around and start changing the data because it doesn't fit what they are actually formal prediction. Uh, the measurement has been going flat. So they, they are predicted going warm, so you can imagine the trouble, right? Sweating, you know, some of them, I'll go sweating probably when at night. And they actually was changing the measurements to try to make it fit more closer to the, to the theory. You would not have believed if we were to not have this class of problem uh, arriving on this planet. It is a very strange thing because I would say maybe it's not the first time, but it's probably one of the biggest kind of problem and concern that any living soul should worry about in the sense that you cannot allow science to go that crazy to have science and scientists using the name of science the good name of science science really have some power that able to help humanity in many ways but to have a bunch of these scientists who actually go around trying to change the data to fit a theory that is the most dangerous proposition we could ever have and that's part of the reason why we all should be conversing and actually, it's in the sense that I also invite those who actually don't believe in what I say, do not have to believe in what I say, just look it up. And then contact us where we can give you all the information. And also, especially those who actually are saying that we are those corrupted and all these people like Michael Mann, Gavin Schmidt, Al Gore. On camera now, I invite all of you to come and debate us and show your data and explain to us. Because that's the only way that I'm simply because, why? I have nothing to be afraid of. The only thing I'm afraid of is, is that people are telling lies. That's it, including myself. Right? If I tell any lies to you, you tell me, show me. What did I what lie did I tell? That's the most critical essence that we must bring this debate. If there is one, I would call it more discussion because probably that those guys would never ever watch my video. But I would like to invite those who are still fairly remain neutral to keep that open mind and then challenge me on showing the proof, which we will. And to try to find the, the question and understanding for yourself, ask yourself, is it decent for somebody to manipulate data? Right? Obviously, we don't agree with that. And those guys will say, no, we didn't do that. We have scientific justification. Really? That's when we have, can have the proper debate. We, I wanted to ask the question, why you correct it this way? How you do it? What are you talking about? Like asking measuring of the sea level. Can you really resolve the sea level in, in some millimeter per year and plus or minus 0 0.1 millimeter per year? That's the claim. It's so easy to make claim that cannot be substantiated in science. In fact, those are usually shot down easily. But in this field, it's one of the strangest things. It's not about shooting now, it's not showing intelligence. It's just ridiculous claim, by the way. To claim that you can measure the global sea level to the level of precision of 0 0.1 plus or minus whatever, 0.1 millimeter per year, that is... Can I pull my hair out? My, I don't have much hair, I shave my hair. One millimeter is thinner than that, okay? It's about the tip of your pencil, if you can visualize the millimeter kind of thing. It's just very tiny little amount, 0.1. I mean, this is 10 times smaller. So, please, think about it. Measure with that position over the whole globe. Elgar, I need help. Please, send money. <laughs>